I've been meaning to make this video for a long time. The story I'm about to tell you happened back in December last year. I'm going to preface this by saying that I already know that I did a few things stupid to get myself into this situation. So the plan was to go to the Highlands of Scotland, the area around Ben Nevis, and spend about two or three days wild camping through the area, getting lots of photos at the same time and also doing a, a video. That is what is likely to cause some problems. Snowfall getting heavier and heavier across the uh, higher parts through central and northern Scotland. The weather was predicted to be snowy, to be very cold, but that was fine because I had the right equipment for that. I had a sleeping bag that is rated down to minus 20. I had a tent that's built for expedition use in mountainous regions, built to withstand high winds, extreme cold. So I set off on the Caledonian sleeper, the overnight train that goes from London to Fort William, near the base of Ben Nevis. Everything started off okay. My train arrived in Fort William on time. I set off for the mountains. I wasn't going to go to the summit of Ben Nevis on the first day. I was going to go and camp somewhere under the North Face, near to the CIC hut. The path up to where I was planning to camp the first night was okay. It was snowing, it was icy but I had crampons to pull over my boots, so I wasn't too worried and it went pretty smoothly. I got to the campsite area around 4pm if I remember rightly. Um, given that this was the middle of winter and quite far north, it was getting dark fast, so I started setting up the tent. In many ways, the spot where I pitched the tent under the north face of Ben Nevis is quite sheltered. It's in a bit of a valley, it's not in the main exposed area at the time. So wind didn't really seem to be a big issue as I was pitching the tent. Unfortunately, as night was setting around me and I was in the tent, I realised that the weather was getting a bit worse. I checked the forecast and it predicted 40 mile per hour winds on the summit of Ben Nevis, which is tolerable, manageable. Um, but as night fell, they updated the forecast and predicted gusts of uh, well over 100 mile per hour winds. So this is when I started to get a little bit worried. Um, the wind was definitely starting to affect the tent. Keep in mind this is a tent that describes itself as being built for these exposed mountainous environments. It should be able to withstand it, but that doesn't change the fact it's still quite unnerving and settling to be in a tent that's being blown around quite considerably. As things started getting worse and the forecast was updated, I decided to contact the custodian of a local mountain refuge, which wasn't too far from where my tent was set up. Unfortunately, he told me that the refuge was closed that night, that it was locked up and that there was no way that I could get in. He recommended that I go down the mountain because he said the storm is going to get worse. I considered that option very seriously. The reason I didn't go down at that point was that the sun had already set. It was already dark. It was bad weather. It was getting worse. But the tent that I was in describes itself as being suitable for that environment. It describes itself as being able to withstand storms on mountains. So if I were to put my faith in that description of the tent, then it makes sense to stay. It makes sense to ride out the night in a shelter rather than attempt to go down in the dark on icy wet paths in a snowstorm with 100 mile per hour winds. My tent was a good shelter. Where I had it set up was close to running water. I had a water filter with me so I could produce as much water as I needed. I had a gas stove. I could cook food. I had plenty of food with me. It seemed like the safe option just to stay and, and ride it out. Unfortunately, things got worse, um, a lot worse. The wind kept picking up, the whole tent was shaking back and forward. It was after midnight, I'd been out the tent several times to re-secure the stakes in the ground to make sure they were firmly in because the wind was blowing the tent so badly that it was trying to pull them out. Earlier on, as I'd realised the winds were picking up, I'd packed my bag for an emergency escape in case it came to it. So I had all my essentials there, ready to go at the side of me in the tent, ready to grab and run. I was half asleep, but I remember becoming suddenly very awake and very aware of the fact that the winds had got so strong that it pulled up the stakes of my tent and the whole tent was rolling. Um, with me inside, with all my equipment inside, it was being uh, rolled away, rolled down an embankment. 
The tent had landed upside down. I opened the door of the tent and looked out to see where I was, to see what had happened. I realised that my boots and a few other things which had been in the vestibule of the tent were left behind where the tent was originally before it got blown away with me inside. I needed to go and get my boots, that was quite important, they were getting extremely wet. They were an essential part of any emergency escape plan. Uh, I quickly tried to tether the tent down and made a run back to where my shoes were. I made sure to put my emergency escape bag outside of the tent, just in case the tent blew away. As I was running back with my boots from where the tent had been, the tent blew away. I remember very vividly, uh, I had my head touch and that was the only source of light. This is miles from any civilization. I remember just seeing the light of my head touch, the faintest reflection coming off the tent as it disappeared into the sky. It was about 30 meters up and it was just going high speed, just gone. No chance. I realized at that point there was no chance that I was going to get it back. It was just gone. It would have been half a mile away within a minute. So that's when you have that moment of sudden realization. There's no choice now. You have to get down. You have to get off this mountain or you're going to die. The temperature was in the minus numbers, but even worse than that, I was wet. My clothes were wet. I realized I have to get off this mountain and I have to do it now or I'm going to die because I'm not going to survive a night on this mountain without shelter, without warm clothes, without anything. So I started moving. I had to rely quite heavily on my GPS device at this point uh, because it was very hard to see where I was going. There's no... There wasn't really a set path from where I was camped to the nearest main path, which was about a mile away. And the journey from where I was camped to the nearest path that's legible involves crossing streams, involves crossing flowing water, going across ice and slippery terrain. It wasn't fun. Uh, the whole time I was being blasted with hail in my face. I remember a few times my foot fell through ice into flowing water. My boots were, at this point, just soaking wet. I realised I was pretty cut up, my feet were pretty cut up from rubbing against my wet boots. There were a few times on that journey where I just wanted to stop and take a break and I just had to tell myself, if you take a break, your body temperature is going to plummet and you're not going to be able to restart. You just have to keep moving, you just have to keep moving, you just have to keep moving. I don't really remember how long it took me. Eventually I got to the more legible path, but even then it's still another couple of miles going downhill on slippery, soaking wet, icy terrain. I remember several times my hiking poles stopped me from falling, and I mean significantly falling. If I didn't have my hiking poles, I probably would have broken an ankle, broken a leg, and probably would have died on the mountain, so use hiking poles, keep them with you. I really don't remember how long it took me to get down, uh, but eventually I did. I was able to find one 24-hour hotel in the town that was open and had room for me. As I got to the desk of the hotel, I realised that my wallet was in the tent when it got blown away. Um, but thankfully I had my phone, so I was able to call friends who were able to give their credit card number over the phone. Uh, so I got in. Uh, I was so tired, but I remember I couldn't actually sleep. I kept waking up every time I tried to sleep because my mind was still in this state of you have to keep moving, you have to keep moving or you're going to die. Um, and it's so hard to break out of that. It's so hard to just relax and sleep after you've been in that state. I remember the next day I just felt so awful. Um, I didn't even have any dry clothes because the dry clothes I'd had were lost in the tent. I just had my basic gear that I used to get down the mountain. I remember the cleaner coming into my hotel room and me and her got chatting and I told her what had happened and she very kindly offered me money to, ch to get myself some dry clothes because she was really taking pity on me at this point. Um, I didn't accept the offer because I had Apple Pay on my phone so I was able to go and get myself some, uh, some clothes. So here we are in my hotel room in Fort William, um, my little safe place.
I think it was a day or two later, I was still in the town in Fort William, staying at the hotel. I got a message from a mountain guide in the area who said he'd been able to find some, not all, but some of my stuff in the mountains and was able to recover it. So I met up with him and was pretty amazed that he'd been able to recover my tripod for my camera and a few other things which were really valuable actually. So I was very grateful to him that he was able to get it down. He'd also recovered my wallet. Um, so I gave him a £20 note that was in my wallet as a, as a thank you. So that's it. That's my story of Ben Nevis and how it almost killed me one time. Um, some tips. Don't go wild camping in the middle of winter alone. Take someone with you. Um, ha definitely take hiking poles. They save my life. Waterproof clothing. Also good. Yeah, in general, just don't be as much of an idiot as me.